Hi, I'm Dr. Bertie Sperry, and I want to tell you a story. Several years back, my sister Tiffany and I were in Singapore. We were there for work. I had some work to do with an amazing company, an amazing group of people. After our work was done, and it was totally joyful. <laughs> when you get to do work that's joyful, like you're not working, you're just playing <laughs> with a purpose. We were done, and we had several days left. So we were going to go around and see some things and do some things. I had some uh, things that I wanted to purchase and um, and bring back for some friends. And one of them was a tailor. So I wanted to get some really great silk for her. I went down to the concierge and told her of the place that some of the housekeeping staff had told me about when I asked them about where to go. The concierge came out from behind the desk and bowed deeply to me and my sister and said, Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am. This is a good place, but the way you dress and the way you speak, can I recommend some other places? And we were like, Oh, okay. <laughs> so she wrote them all down on the list and we gave them to our driver, or the man who was driving for us, sorry. And when we got to the first place, my sister Tiffany looked at me and said, Hoppo, who this woman? <laughs> it's a line from the color purple. We go inside this shop and it was like we had walked into Oz. It was so, I can't even call it upscale. There was no scale for this. I felt like what we used to call when we were teasing each other, you look like a rich woman. It was that. It was so, wow. First of all, Singapore, you land and you think you've walked into the movie Inception. It's otherworldly. This place, this shop, we were just walking around with our mouths open. And we knew we weren't purchasing anything in there. Everybody else who was shopping had servants with them. Anyway. <laughs> they were like, why she send us here? We walked by one shop that was a, a, a jeweler's shop. And literally, it was it was it, it would blow anything out of the water I'd ever seen in terms of a you know like a gemstone kind of place. And the man outside said, "Come in, please." Oh, hello, hello! And he was greeting us, and we were like, "Us?" And so we went in, and my sister had her backpack on, and so she said, "Oh, you want to take my backpack because that's what we're used to." And he was like, okay, I'll hold it for you. Like, maybe she needed help holding it. And he was standing following us around the whole time. He, to serve us, not suspecting us. In fact, they pulled out diamonds and things that we didn't ask to see. That They just wanted to show us at the same time and would walk away from them and, you know, go other places and just left us there. And in that moment, we realized how impacted we had been by racism. We, you know it, but when it's lifted off of you, you really feel how much it's been on you. It's as if someone's been choking you and you get used to it because it's not full on pressure. And then they release their grip and you can breathe. That day, we were escorted from one amazing place to the next. And the man who was driving for us said we were such a joy to be with that we were so delightful. As we talked to him and 
found out about his, his wife and children and his family and where he was from. And he shared stories with us. We asked why the woman would have sent us to these places where clearly millionaires shopped. And he said, it's the way you carry yourself. You're full of joy. You're full of life. You have no sense of weight about you. In other words, we didn't seem like we were burdened by poverty. He also said, your English is wonderful. Your clothes are magnificent and you're kind. shouldn't have to leave your house to be respected. I came home and decided that I would give my time, my energy, and my heart to the folks who could see it. Most people don't see it the way they saw it. But I can see them trying. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. We're going to get there. I love you.